32. So you so you have eight, you have two clothing stores. Yeah. To your question, uh, when I do a daily thing. Yeah, your daily. Well, I, I worked, as I mentioned, most of my life, well, up to age 67 or so. And when I left education, uh, I thought I was at that level where it was no longer fun. Okay. It's getting more business. Right. And different kinds of business. Uh, I won't go too far into this, but uh, it seemed to get us against them, teachers being them. Acrimonious. And uh, it drove me nuts because, uh, you know, I was asked, Adrian, who are you going to work for us? So the teachers said, What the heck? I'm a teacher. Yeah. And if you don't have that spirit, how are you going to make a good administrator? And so, uh, anyway, got turned on to that. So, I, went to, I got my doctorate from the University of Southern California and uh, made a lot of contacts. It's a great school, in particular in education. And when I told them, they found out I was going to leave education, they offered me a job. I probably remember the faculty some lesser point, I guess, or else place me. Southern California said, no, I'm leaving entirely. I'm a new lifestyle. So my wife agreed heartily. She, so that's without one day's of practical experience in business, retailing especially, I, uh, I took on with the help of Gloria and Bob Egan. But Gloria was my student in 1956 at Fremont. And uh, they had two stores already, so they gave us some advice and helpfully. Many people know Gloria Egan, Gloria Card, as I made it, from class of 60, especially would know her, for those who went to Benna High School, where she went. So we decided to have a complete change of lifestyle. Because some philosophers say, and I adhere to this to some degree, is the, the the only thing constant in life changing is the only thing Change. constant in life. Yeah. Well, and so we took them on that and uh, we, whole new venture, one of the greatest decisions of my life because it gave us a new beginning, a new life, new lifestyle. I kept my uh, endeared friends in Sunnyvale and became a whole new era of friendships. I got heavily involved here at Saratoga in 1906, 1990 I was Citizen of the Year as I was in Sunnyvale in 1965 and in Chico in 1948. And so that opened up a whole new life experience. And at, the, at that time you are 67 years old. Yeah, yeah. Well, I retired. Yeah. I, yeah so so I'm, I'm just saying that for anybody out there that's watching this yeah. that is anywhere near that age. Yeah. Here you started a whole, a whole new chapter. That was our purpose in getting out. I got tired of working with politics and working standard deviation, deviations and standard scores and statistics and doing it directly, which. I had the opportunity when I first went to the district office because I pointed out I had envisions of a whole new curriculum. Not a new curriculum, revised curriculum. Sure. And so that was a change there, but then that got more political as the time went on. That's how I moved from it. Yeah. And it was a tremendous decision to, to change our lifestyle. And uh, we did. So speaking of lifestyles, just to let people know, you currently are living yes. in Valley. <laughs> <laughs> but you're at the a, a beautiful facility is, here yeah. in Saratoga, and uh, you've got your meals are taken care of, and yeah, this is yeah. Well, I got became uh, incapable of caring for myself, and so I had to give up my home. We lived for 17 years in the villages. Very beautiful environment, 
not for me any longer. But that's on the east side of San Jose with yeah. golf course and it's like a retirement. Oh, it is a retirement. It's a recreational retirement. Right. Swimming through the hoard. But uh, there was a, so I moved into here and, uh, three, two, a couple years ago. And to the original question, what I do during the day, well, I have lots of visitors which keeps me going, and many of them are students from Sunnyvale High School. Different classes come in. Fantastic. And, uh, y'all, it does it so uh, invigorating and exciting. It, you know what it does in my mind? It reinforces how well of a job that not only you did individually as a principal, but as the teachers did. Yeah. I've gotten a few, more than a few people saying, make sure Adrian knows that I chose to become a teacher. Really? Yeah, oh, many, many. What a compliment. Matter of fact, uh, uh, one person uh, who was in the, I think classes 75 or 76, uh, you weren't there, but she made a point of your legacy still lives on. Oh, thank you. And, and she you. chose that noble profession as a teacher. I have one question. I have, I, have, I have more than one question, uh, but uh, the best advice you ever got, give me 30 seconds on the best advice you ever got. That's a heck of a question. <laughs> hey, wait, while you're thinking about that, um, I was going to uh, ask you, um, it takes a big man to admit that he has weaknesses. Oh, yeah. And so well, what, what, would you, what would you think your biggest weakness would be and then the best advice you ever got? That's a very good question. Both of How am I doing here? Yeah. <laughs> Can we go back and change my GPA from uh, yeah. 2.6 to 2.8? Give me part of that. <laughs> For my personal use. <laughs> well, this goes way back. I had many great uh, advices. Too many to even count or to give credit to. But there's one when I was working in industry. I was age 20, and I left the intercontinent aircraft in Miami. I'm not going to be drafted any minute to go to Willis Overland in Toledo, Ohio, uh, where they make the Jeeps. They were building an aircraft uh, division, and they needed aircraft experience. All the other guys were auto, which tolerance and yeah. building at the uh, strict and aircraft. And so I was a night supervisor, uh, I was a night inspector, uh, working with men on the line, and building an inner wing for the F4U Corsair, which is a war horse in the Pacific, off the, air, off the carriers, folded wings, to get on the carrier. And so one night, this was the first one that they called the informant. Hey, inspector, come over here and buy this aircraft. Buy means you prove it. Well, you carry a red tag and a blue tag in your pocket. Red means failure. And so he called me, and, and you know, the counter set of rivets on the skin of the plane. I've got to be that. You can't have one going crooked. The you know, airfoil just stripped the whole wing, see the skin off the wing. And so, oh, I'm a big shot. I'm 20 years old. Fool yourself. Yeah. So I got to look, look, holy cow, this is horrible. I so I took that red grease and so <laughs> mopped it. This is not time. So horrible. The men working, their jaws dropped. Very hurt and disappointed. This is my greatest lesson in human relations. And so the next morning when I go in, my boss says, Who the heck do you think you are? I said, Would you buy that aircraft? He says, Of course not. I said, Well, how would you do it? Remember this, son. When you work with people, you let them down easily. They have egos too. Now, all people don't adhere to that principle. But to my personality, to me, it's basic. Why hurt somebody if you can do the same job but soothing it as best you can? Yeah. And that's the principle that I got out of that one line that you told me. I, I, said, I asked him, what you, 
what would you do? He says, here's not what I would do. There's a lot of things could be done. Wait and let my boss look at it. Or uh, find one spot on that wing that was well done. Give him a lot of pat him on the back heavily for that. Done one swoop so you failed. So that's And it. I'm sure in your duties as principal in the years Can outside of that that you used that probably didn't realize you were doing it, but you, you left a little wiggle. Absolutely. Left a little wiggle. Absolutely. You didn't cut him at the knees. That's only fail high one last thing. Please. I as vice principal, I said yeah, terrible job. You gotta make decisions about students that are rules and regulations from that. Well, I didn't necessarily agree with some of the rules, but I had to perform my duties. You got a job. And so I could brag. Because well, my duty was when school students had to be suspended, I, the boys, I had to do it. There wasn't a student that I suspended, not many, but what I did. None of them left without shaking my hand. Because he knew. Hopefully he, they're watching this. He got a fair <laughs> shake from me. <laughs> okay, the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, probably I shouldn't sing this song, but I'm gonna try it anyway. It's called, What's It All About, Alfie? Oh, yeah. So I'm gonna ask oh, you, well, in your beliefs it. in life, and we, and we may cross over into religious beliefs, but if somebody said to you, as a, as a man in his 90s, what's it all about? Oh boy, that's what wonderful. What's it all about, Adrian? Wonderful question. Wonderful. It's very what uh, complex, but you can reduce it down. And one word, love. Fantastic. Love. You're going Beatles on me. All you need is love. Yeah. Well, love has a broad uh, interpretation. Uh, it's when two people get married. They could say in nowadays, so if it doesn't work, we can get divorced. I've get, I've, wet, I've married three or four different couples. State law can be sworn and do that. Exactly. And I use this somebody. And, and, it's, and it's not of not uh, how much I give. It's a matter of giving without qualification. Yes. Qualification. Yeah. And so unconditional. Unconditional. And so, if that is a genuine love of people, I'm not saying uh, this is like a married couple, but uh, it applies to all levels of life. We need each other. We should help each other. Neighbors need neighbors. It's not trite, it's true. We don't have enough of it. Students need teachers. Teachers love students. Maybe sometimes that's hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> and my usually is to teach the students right. <laughs> but that's what, in a nutshell, is uh, uh, I look back on life, I'm very proud of it. To be egotistical, uh, I'm proud of the hard times of early life, the difficulties, the disasters, the tragedies. And the good times, because that is a part of the human condition, is to live the good life and to live it with others. Fantastic. In closing, I'm, I, do you know the words to the alma mater from St. Yeah. Are you uh, willing uh, to sing it with me? I, uh, you go ahead. You take it. All right. I'll start and you jump in. Hail. All hail, hail to alma mater. mater. All hail to Sunnyvale High, we'll always remember as time goes flying by, the blue of the ocean, the white clouds up above, big finish, the blue and white of Sunnyvale High. The school we love. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? You, you said something.
something three minutes ago about adhering to your principles. I'm going to adhere to my principle yeah. by principle staying up. <laughs> oh, thank How's you. that for adhering? Thank you. Yeah, this Why? has been great. Why? I know you can't. you got to edit that, I know. <laughs> great. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's why I'm always up there. I'm going to get those. Can I mention them? Because I have to be the one to tell 2,000 students that the president was assassinated. Excuse me. Anyway, the news came to me, and uh, I, I was shocked, of course. And uh, such a great president. But, and so I. Uh, but on the PA system and asked the teachers to play that the for the told the student body that president has been assassinated. And it's a sad moment for all of America. And I suggest to the teachers that they cancel the instruction for the day and spend time working with students and let them go in small groups to discuss it. Even let them go outside and sit on the senior lawn one night. And it was just a horrible day. And I had then sent for the buses and asked them to come over and pick the students up to go home. Some parents had heard about it, the assassination, and came over to pick their children up. And some of them walked home, everyone with teary eyes. So I, I think I wrote in the 60, 60 a book, 63 a book, about the, it's not what you can do for your country. It's not what you can do, but what you can do for your country. And, uh,